Back down into this tunnel. Oh, big backward scrub landing on the rocks. And we're going down. That was a big one, too. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Kellen here from Start Your Systems, and welcome back to MXS ATV Legends Career Mode. Continuing on today, week 93 onwards. I don't know how far we'll get here, but uh, finally getting to kind of the end of the first part of the national championship. I think we're still on 252 strokes, but obviously it's a 12-round uh, championship. And we're starting off with this St. Cloud track, which I don't think I've actually played before. Uh, so kind of excited to try a new track. There's a lot of these uh, environments that have multiple national tracks on them. And you don't, at least in career mode, play all of them until you get pretty deep into the career mode. So this one is, I believe, one of the ones that I haven't played yet, uh, at least from the overhead track map, I believe it is. We'll see if it is or not. And hopefully we're still on a 252 stroke because I just did a whole setup for a two stroke that I was going to use for this video. And if it boots me back to a different bike, I'm going to be well annoyed. I don't really know why yet they have, uh, and this is a track that I haven't done yet. I don't know why they have it so... Um, at least with 252 strokes, like, or with this this national championship, they have you ride a 252 stroke so much, but it is what it is. Ooh, man, this Honda's feeling a little bit slow compared to the Yamaha that I had been accustomed to. But I do still feel that the 252 strokes are maybe the best bike in the game in terms of playability, how they feel, and so on and so forth. Like I said, this is a track that I have not done just yet, so still trying to get kind of my wits about me here. Don't know all where the track goes or everything like that, but we're going to find our way around. A lot of fifth gear sections and then quickly into some slower speed sections. Hopping down the hill right here. I think this is a track that if you do the ATV career mode, uh, you move through and do this track a little bit faster than some of the other tracks. So if you've already done this track, it's likely because you have the ATV career stuff done um, or you've done more of the ATV career than I have at least because we're all the way almost to week 100 and I still have now just actually started doing this track. And it looks like this track actually goes underneath itself a little bit. I'm kind of curious what that's about. It says, do not go off the track during this event for the sponsor challenge. And I think I've already failed that, but it doesn't look like it's given me a failure score just yet. Oh yeah, here we go through a little tunnel. That's pretty cool. Very similar to the Valis outdoor track on this game. Oh, yeah, we went off the track. Now it actually says an off-track graphic, and we went off the track. All right, so let's work our way back down this hill towards the finish line. Kind of like that track, it very, other than the going through like a long tunnel in the mountain. has a very like realistic national track feel to it, up and down through the hills a little bit. Got a whoop section here coming to the finish line, it looks like. I think this is the finish line at least. Yeah, finish line right there, a little double. And hard on the gas all the way down here into the little first turn and then rejoin with the track. So yeah, very realistic national track feel. Definitely like the the feeling of that. Oh, that's a pretty deep rut already laid down from those guys in the first turn. All right, fifth gear on the uphill. Ooh, rear end sliding around a little bit. Dancing our way all the way to the top. So with this bike as well, I've gone with a bit of a, a softer suspension setting, very similar to what I used on the Yamaha in the other career mode video. And what I've decided so far is that that seems to be the way to go in terms of comfort on at least national tracks. Like if you're trying to land big jumps and stuff, maybe the stiffer suspension is the way to go. But on these national tracks, it really feels nicer to have the softer suspension setting. So I'm on the level two of the softer suspension. Uh, level three feels like a little bit too soft for me. Or just like not not enough plushness or too much plushness, I would say, to like really carry speed and momentum. Like this one kind of hovers over the bumps, whereas the other one just kind of like sits into them a little bit too much. But again, that's just kind of my own feeling. Could be different for everybody that plays, and I'm still trying to figure out some good tuning settings that I like. But we're cruising right along here, and it feels like it's a little bit hit and miss with uh, shifting still, using manual transmission, left stick uh, on the controller is to shift down and right stick is to shift up if you're still confused by that and trying to play it on console and by the way the patch is now available for xbox i know that this is probably a little bit late news in case you didn't already know that but any xbox players that were wondering where the 
the patch 1.07 was that came out after the day one release of the game. Um, that's now available on Xbox. It came out Friday. So if you haven't played the game since then, you can try it out now. Uh, the patch, for the most part, was supposed to correct some of the sliding issues and make the physics a little bit more, I guess, playable. <laughs> because uh, a lot of people still don't really like the way that the physics feel. Uh, loosen the bike up just a little bit in terms of the air physics, so I think whips are a little bit more doable now. Still not very easy, but definitely more doable than they were. And uh, yeah, so now on Xbox. Uh, we've already done a couple videos on the new physics engine since it dropped on PC like a week and a half ago now, so it's a little bit of old news, but if you have any more questions about that, please feel free to uh, hit us up in the comment section below. We'll try to answer those questions as quickly as we possibly can try to wrap it up here on the st cloud outdoor track it's a it's a good track i will say that for whatever reason it doesn't feel like it has as much flow as some of the other tracks that we've we have been playing so i'm not sure why that is or maybe it's just the honda that i'm not really gelling with uh definitely over revving it too much in some spots and maybe not in the right gear in some other spots so it could just be the way i'm playing right now that's not really feeling the flow on this track but we're getting there and got a massive lead so i'm still on goat as well which is the highest difficulty for the ai and i know that's another stickling point for some of you guys where you're not sure why the hardest difficulty of ai is so easy um but i think that's simply just like they're a lot of other problems that <laughs> rainbow studios is trying to deal with with this game right now and they haven't quite got to the level where they are fixing the AI just yeah but look how deep some of these corners are getting man I've been wanting to do like a, a playthrough on one of these tracks where we see how deep the track gets and, and it's pretty deep in some of those ruts already so that's pretty cool to see how the uh, terrain deformation is coming into play on this track specifically I haven't seen it dig down that much on many other tracks and this is weird too because it's not really like a sandy track at all it's a much more hard packed base looking track so interesting to see how Dug down it is, but we're going to take the win. A little bit of a taunt over the line. We got a first place. They'll go up on the podium, get all that stuff, and proceed right to the next event. So I think now we're going to the desert tracks, and I don't know which one we're starting with, but I know that the Valis uh, biome has, I think, three tracks, very similar to the one that we just did right there. There's Archer and two other tracks, I think, on that exact same biome that we just did right there. Um, St. Cloud is the only track on that one I hadn't done, so... Uh, I actually like all three of the tracks on that one. Um, I still think Archer maybe is my favorite overall national track, but that one that one feels pretty good. All right, so we're starting with Valis Outdoor, and yeah, this is the this is a really really long one. So I think are we doing three laps on this? This is gonna be a long race if we're doing all three laps. But let's take a look. Yeah, three laps. Go off track at least once and podium the event. That's an interesting objective, but try to make do. All right, so this track is super, super long. If it's the same one I'm thinking of, maybe it's not, but it definitely does seem to look like it. Yeah, I think this is the really, really long one. So this is going to be a majority of the video right here is the Valis Outdoor track because, like I said, it, it, this is like four-minute lap times or something like that. It is easily one of the most uh, creative national tracks I can think of in the MX vs. ATV franchise with how long uh, and thought out this track is. But it also just kind of seems like they had like a base national track and just extended it a little bit into some of the trails that are on the Valis uh, biome. So maybe it's a little bit of both. That little step up right there. There we go. And now the Honda, maybe just because it's a little bit more wide open on this track, is feeling a little bit better on this track. There's a, some of that bounciness, though, still that we're dealing with with the game. But already a pretty sizable lead, so we'll just toss out a... Nice little kick out whip right there, land on the rear tire, go off the track and come back on. So now, as long as we podium the event, we're going to completely knock it out of the water with our sponsor challenge. Right, come down this hill, land in fourth gear, jump into fifth, downside that guy, and then up this hill the other side. But a very unique track. I mean, look at how far out it goes into like basically the dunes, I guess is what this would be. Back over here, we're going to land off the track and get kicked off the side of the track, darn it. But this almost looks like some of the dunes that you'd see on like a, a standard desert biome. And the track runs all the way back here. You get on the gas and jump way over this big tabletop in the back. We're going a little bit long, but we still landed it. And not all the sponsor banners are put up right there. That's kind of interesting. So this one right here, I think is like a little scrub table. Yep, and then a little step up right here. Then a big guy coming down this hill. 
Ooh, way too much speed. Yeah, that was going to be a crash inevitable. Should have scrubbed it. Definitely a scrubbable downhill jump right there. Get this big triple into the corner, land a little nose heavy, but we're good there. Fourth or fifth gear seems to be the way around this track, at least on the two-stroke. Let's see if I could triple this and then jump up onto this plateau. I don't know if I've taken that line before, but I like the feel of that. Feels a little bit better than doubling all the, all the way through and then hitting the tabletop and yeesh, launching off of that dragon's back. This fifth gear all around this place on a 252 stroke. All right, so downside that triple and carry some momentum into one of the coolest parts of the track, in my opinion. Go through this tunnel down here and then we can toss a filthy scrub looking back at the camera, see if we can land that. Oh, heavy landing, but we're good. And then this uphill right here is, is really kind of a fun challenge because it's like, it's almost like a hill climb uphill. Like it's got little bumps and notches all the way through it that you have to kind of like navigate correctly. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Excite Bike 64 uphill um, that had like some jumps and stuff in it that you had to try to climb. Uh, the hill climb in Excite Bike 64 is one of the special events in that game way back two decades ago. Almost two and a half decades ago, I guess now, right? Excite Bike was 99, 98. There's a one lap done, and it was a 3.22, so a little bit faster than the four minute mark that I expected, but we're still gonna have quite a long little race right here. Come out of the top of the hill here and get on the gas coming down. Fifth gear just all the way around this left-hand corner because we can, because that's how fast this track is. Scrub that guy right there, go a little bit long and hard landing. Can we still get the uphill triple? Not quite. But our race lead is already out to half a minute. Let's see if we can get it to a minute and a half before this is over. Scrub right there. Stay low. It's fifth gear all the way up this hill, just over revving. Carrying so much speed and momentum. And we'll hop through this corner. A little bit like the uh, Bud's Creek left-hander down towards the finish line jump in real life right there with the kind of turning rollers that you jump over. And then this long downhill that's basically a whoop section into a big uh, uh, downhill triple because those bumps are naughty. But just a super fun track. Like I don't think it's my favorite track in the game just because of like it, does, it, it feels maybe a, a touch too long for like a realistic feeling national track. And obviously there's some parts of it that are really unrealistic like um, how fast this back section is for one, but also the part where you go into um, like the underground cave. Uh, you don't think you're gonna be finding that on too many realistic national tracks. But again, this is supposed to be like an arcade game and supposed to be more fun and family friendly, you know, make it a little bit more interesting for kids and stuff like that. So I think it's cool when they elect to go a little bit out of the box with stuff like that and, and incorporate a cave or a tunnel or something weird like that, because why not? Like it doesn't need to be overtly realistic national tracks, especially when we can just get the actual real national tracks as DLC in the game anyways. So it's fun to have a little bit of uniqueness with these tracks and the level designers, in my opinion, absolutely knocked it out of the park with this game. They have done such a terrific job of making these tracks fun and easily rideable. And then the environments beyond the track, really, really vast and enjoyable as well definitely one of the plus sides of the game for me like I still am not really all there with the physics yet for sure still think there's some improvements there um, and obviously customization is severely lacking in this game but the level design is the bright spot for sure so always try to give them a little bit of kudos when I can back down in this tunnel oh big backwards scrub landing on the rocks and we're going down that was a big one too all right, let's see if we can go faster than that 322 that we put down. It's not feeling like it. This lap is feeling a little bit lackluster towards the end, especially with this uphill starting to grind me up for breakfast. But actually, we might still get there in time. I think the first part of this lap was a little bit better than our last lap, and we only got a couple more turns here. I think we might just, just get there before 322. If I put back-to-back -back 322s in, I'll tell you what, though. Not going to be having a good time. I think it literally is going to be back-to-back 322s. Yep. <laughs> 322-4. I don't know what the first lap was, but now we have a 645-3. So pretty much the exact same lap time back-to-back. -back. We're just out here putting the same laps in over and over again. 
And my, la my lead is now 43 seconds, so it seems that the AI has gotten faster on the second lap through. Because the first lap we gapped him by 30 seconds. This last time by, we only gapped him by uh, 13 seconds, but now that gap is starting to open up again. We're out to 52, 53 seconds in a space of like one uphill by the looks of it. I think that uphill uh, out of the cave is where they're really struggling. They're getting stuck on that thing, it seems like to me at least. Well, actually, they're going up it right now and it seems like it's pretty good. So maybe the entrance to the cave is where they're losing all their time because it just went from like 42 seconds out to 56 real quick. All right, turning rollers one more time. Pop through those guys. Pretty easy, man. I actually got those really nice this time through. Scrub back down the hill. Oh, yeah. Carrying some good speed over those rollers, over revving the crud out of the engine. Nice flick out little whip right there. Don't go too long. Got to get on the brakes to not go flying off the track all the way. Can I actually, like, table this at the top of the hill? I guess kind of, right? Land to the outside on the gas and come down to scrub that guy. A little bit long, but still just fifth. Absolutely wicked on this two-stroke. We were scrubbing every jump so hard. So hard that we didn't even clear that one. But this lap already is feeling a lot better than those 322s I've been putting down. So we'll see if this turns into my best lap of the race. Maybe even go not only a few seconds faster, but like 10 seconds faster. would be pretty sweet. So we come flying back down this guy. Still no crashes on this lap, but as I say that, I'm probably going to yard it here any second. Connecting these lines really well, though. And then triple into there. Up onto the plateau. Oh, yeah. I'm really cruising through this section here. Land in fourth gear. Right back into fifth over these whoops. Downside that triple beautifully. We are really moving on this lap. We got to try to get this double clean. We can't go too fast. Scrub it. Oh, we're going to just come up short. Don't go down hard on the brakes at the bottom. That's all right. We're good. We are good. Oh, this uphill is killing me, though. Had to shift down. Double clutched a few times. Uh, I still think we might go 10 seconds a lap faster this time, which is pretty remarkable. We're going to exit the tunnel just past the three-minute mark, and I'm trying to get there at 312 if I can, which is 10 seconds faster. Oh, we're there. 307, 308, 309 last lap. Wow. So we're really cruising. We didn't crash once, I don't think. that Jumping into the tunnel was a little bit greasy, but pretty good in the end. Yeah, 309.5, and they're putting down 346s. The AI, it's not even close. So... First, Valis Outdoor done. I don't know if there's more that's part of this national championship, but we'll try for this third race here and see what we get. And then I think that's probably a video for you fine folks today. I don't think we need to go much longer than a couple races at a time as we work through the career mode. But I wish that like in these loading screens, it would tell you what's coming up, like what's the next track, um, maybe a layout of it or something like that, just to always go back to this same graphic every single time. Uh, which is basically the title graphic. Kind of boring. It'd be cool to have like overhead or like in Reflex and um, Untamed it was. You have a like a place to ride. Okay, so Bighorn National, which is one of the tracks that was DLC uh, in MX Thursday TV All Out. But uh, yeah, it'd be fun to have in the loading screen there a little bit of like some free ride or something to do other than just look at the loading screen the whole time. And we're going to rip the whole shot which is maybe the last time we'll see any of those guys. So we'll big dog it over the first hill here. Get upside down and land off the track. And actually, they're going to all pass me again. So never mind. I was totally joking. Nope. We're going to hold on to the lead. Ooh, this is a little bit of an extended version of the Bighorn National Track. We've done some of the kind of smaller versions of this track, but this one is going all around the gaff back here. Bounce through these braking bumps. Huge braking bumps. And then this jump right here is the one that you guys have seen probably a thousand times in all the MX Race ATV Legends commercials that they've had. And the guy does like a, what, a Superman seat grab over this. You're going to just do a cheesy little bar hop off of it. Hit that tabletop right there. And then, holy smokes, those bumps are big. 
I'm trying to remember if this track is identical to the Bighorn track that they included as DLC and All Out, or if it's a little bit different. I feel like there's a couple of things that they've maybe changed up about these sections, but the actual environment looks pretty much the exact same, at least to me. Again, maybe more frequent MXS ATV players could tell me if I'm dead wrong on that, but it does look pretty similar to that DLC map that they gave us. Those ruts are big through that corner right there. We haven't even done a lap of the race. So the pre-made ruts on this track are certainly no joke. Curious what it's going to look like after a lap of these guys going around this circuit. And I like so far how, like, this track doesn't seem to have many, like, jumps. It just has a lot of these gnarly braking bumps and, like, uh, <laughs> I guess they're kind of like singles uh, that have braking bumps in them. Feels very realistic to the motocross that I know. Oh, where's it going off the side of the track? That's not going to work. But we did go off track at least once, and we're going to try to podium the event, which is our sponsor objective this time. I don't know which sponsor I'm with right now. I think it's maybe Phoenix. But this is a track that I haven't done in this game yet, at least, but I do know that it, I'm pretty sure I've done either this exact same track or something very similar to it in MXR's ATV All Out as we almost scrubbed over the backside of that. This fifth gear absolutely wicked to the back of this. Carry some speed through there. And we're moving right along very nicely. Already a 21 second lead, so not nearly as gnarly as what we were pulling on Vallis, but still pretty sizable margins here. Another little bar hop over the top of that guy. Should try to bust something gnarly off of that. Maybe a big whip next time. I like these whoops right here. These whoops feel really nice. I don't know if they've updated that or not with the patch, but those whoops suddenly feel way better than they did pre-patch. So that would be my guess is the suspension changes that they made to the game, coupled with some soft suspension settings that I've added to my own setup, make that stuff feel a lot better overall. And it's just good to know that they're listening, right? Like as some people were saying um, that they're feeling a lot more fun with this game after like a week. And that's obviously some of the patch that comes into play that everybody's uh, now got and game feels a little bit better, different, whatever you want to call it with the patch. But uh, clearly they've, they got some pretty negative feedback from day one launch. Uh, even on Steam, if you went there on the first day, it said that all the reviews were mostly negative, which is always bad uh, for a game developer to have a game on Steam with pretty bad reviews of it right away. And I think now it's gone to just mixed reviews. It's not positive or negative, it's just mixed. Um, but still, like they obviously had to go through a lot of stuff to try to clean it up. And uh, they still have to make some pretty serious amends to a lot of things. Uh, to make this a really full complete game, but they're listening and that's I think all anybody really ever asked for because a lot of times like especially with the milestone people It doesn't really feel like they're listening. Maybe they are to some things, but they just a lot of stuff goes right in one ear and out the other and uh, At least with rainbow so far on this game specifically they are trying to make those amends and make them quickly but we'll see. We'll see if they get there or if they continue to struggle as we pop up onto that table. That felt pretty cool. Let's see if we get a nice big whip off on this. Oh, I just didn't get it pulled back around. It's really hard to pull these whips back. Very uh, counterintuitive to what you'd expect it to feel like. And there's no gyro that really helps you either. It just feels like the bike is always uh, you're doing to pull it back, which obviously in real life to a degree, once you get the engine kind of spooled back up in midair as you're whipping. That's so often why you hear guys when they're whipping, they're like wide open every single time as they get that gyro to kind of flow the bike back to dead center and help move it with your legs a little bit, but it still does always kind of auto correct to a degree, uh, which this game doesn't feel like it does. It feels like you kick it out and you have to do all of the controlling to get it back to where it would be centered. It's a little bit unrealistic, but something that you can at least make look halfway decent every now and again. Oh, as we're bouncing through those rollers a little bit. Final lap though, a couple more turns to go. And we're gonna be done with these three national tracks in the MX Tour. I think I might actually just go ahead and, and uh, end the MX Tour kind of on my own playthrough and get to maybe like the last round so we can at least see the, the conclusion of the MX series um, and then see some of the cutscenes involved with it and so on and so forth. And then we'll move on to future events. But 
has been another edition of Career Mode in MXOZ TV Legends. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As always, please be sure to get involved in the comment section below if you guys have any questions or concerns about the game. I'd be happy to answer them for you. But for now, we're going to send you guys on your way, and we'll see you in the next one. So long for now.